I love milk washing cocktails. It's a great process, a great technique to add some complexity and a little bit of visual stunningness to a drink. It gives it a little bit of milk, kind of silky texture, but it also makes the drink clear. It's a little deceiving, right? When you look at it, right? You think it's a clear drink, you're not sure what to expect, and then boom, full flavor. The only issue that I have seen with milk punching cocktails is the time. The time to run the cocktail through filter is long and absurd. I've done five gallons and it takes me five to six hours to do that. I put out an Instagram reel about my issue. I was having a couple people reach out to me. So, so today we're gonna try a technique from Kat. She's a fellow bartender from Vegas and she sent me or asked her a question about it and her username is Kitty Glitter. And she basically said to run uh, through a 250 to 300 micron beer in a bag. And then also once you're done with that, to run it through a nut bag inside the micro bag. And then the last step is to use a big funnel with a paper towel and run it through there. And she says that she can do a five gallon batch in one to two hours. And that is insane. Now that's just the filtering part. Obviously the, uh, the milk washing part probably will still take just as long. There's no way to really speed up that. So today we're gonna do a Mai Tai. I did have Matt, the whiskey nerd, he asked to do a whiskey sour slash New York, New York sour. And I actually made that video but I fucked it up majorly. Did I want to edit that video and show you my mistakes? Absolutely, but it's also, I also want to show you the correct way. So I'll tell you my mistakes when we're on the build out part of the cocktail and what I did wrong, so you don't make those same mistakes. So I have a one gallon of whiskey sour that's already made, and now we're gonna make a Mai Tai. I don't think I've ever milk punched a Mai Tai that I can remember, but I've done it a lot. So I think it'll be interesting Riley asked for it or suggested it and so it's her birthday coming up. So, you know, I'm just gonna make it for her. So let's make a milk punch. Let's make a one gallon milk punch cocktail. All right, so we're going with the classic Trader Vic Mai Tai. So it'll be two ounces of a blended rum, half ounce of triple sec. Normally use Contro, but I'm using the another brand for today. Uh, one ounce of lime juice, half ounce of orgeat. What I like to do when I batch cocktails is I want to pre-portion everything out so i don't have to measure when i'm putting it in the container it's all ready to go i'm just dumping because i can use a bigger measuring glass when i'm doing this so you'll see the recipe i'll have it pop up here on the side so you can see my math and how i got to the numbers i did let's just start making it there's always gonna be math when scaling up cocktails so here's how i break down so the recipe is two ounces of rum half ounce triple sec one ounce lime half ounce orgeat that is a total of four ounces now we're going to need to add dilution to the cocktail since we're not going to shake it You'll see some videos out there that do 20%, 25%. I'm gonna do 15% and I'll explain that later. So four ounces times 15% is 0.6 ounces of water. So that is a total volume of 4.6 ounces for the beverage itself. A gallon is 128 ounces. Divide that by 4.6 and you have 28 cocktails that we can fit into one gallon. I'm gonna go ahead and round up the recipe to 30 drinks because two ounces of rum times 30 is 60 ounces and that is how much is in a 1.75 milliliter bottle of rum. Then what you do is take 30 times every ingredient. 30 times two, 60 ounces of rum. 15 ounces of triple sec. 30 ounces of lime juice, 15 ounces of orgeat, and 18 ounces of water. I add those all up and that is 138 ounces total of cocktail with dilution. To figure out how much milk I need, I need to times that by 0.25 or 25% and that is 34 and a half ounces of milk. You want to combine all the ingredients into the container that is not going to be doing the milk washing. You want to add the cocktail to the milk. Give the cocktail a slight stir. So I'm gonna pour the milk into a, the container that I want to milk wash. Then I'm gonna pour the cocktail into the milk. And here you go. This is one gallon of a milk wash of a Mai Tai. So I wonder if the orgeat will play enemy to the whole milk. I don't know, but it is curdling right now. So that is a good sign that it is curdling. I just don't know how much it's going to curdle and start that process. So we're gonna give it a try. It is still like 30, 36 degrees here in Iowa. So I'm just gonna cover this up, put it outside. You normally would just put it in your refrigerator and check on it. I'm gonna probably give it five or six hours. Obviously the longer you leave it, the more clear it can get. So we're just gonna go five, six hours and we'll check back. Okay, so this is the first part I screwed up in the first video. I had just taken the micro bag and I fully clamped it 
to the container without thinking about how am I going to remove this bag evenly and easily. So what I'm doing here is I'm de deciding where I want the bottom of the bag to be inside the cambro. I'm gonna clamp it to the cambro in four spots on the four edges so it doesn't move on me anymore. I'm gonna roll the outside back up so I can manage all the excess bag in an easier way. So now what I'm doing is scrunching up the corners and I'm only clamping the bag itself, not to the cambro. My thought behind this is, is if I lift the bag up now, it's kind of like in a perfect square shape. So when I move it to another cambro, it just kind of lays in the same spot because you don't want to move the bottom of the bag around a lot. I don't want to disrupt the kernels to mess up the filtering process. And as you can see, the, the milk wash does have a really good separation of only being four to five hours. And again, I'm just adjusting it, making sure everything looks fine because once you have all that weight of the milk in there, it's kind of pain in the ass to move around. So I'm just verifying everything and now we're good to go. The first time I did this, I forgot that I'm gonna have to start this process again once, once the curd's kind of settled for this part that drops into the bag, for the part that drops into the cambro. So now what I'm doing is I'm unclamping the edges that were clamped to the cambro. I'm trying to pick this bag up as evenly, slowly and nicely as possible without disrupting the curds as much as possible. So this is the part I did not think of the first time I did this, a milk wash of a gallon with the whiskey sour. And now I'm just praying to whoever, the cocktail gods that this doesn't screw up. For the most part, it's going okay. It's a lot of clamps, a lot of weights, but better than the other time. The reason why you want to move this over, in case you don't know, is that first part that is in the camera, that's not really filtered out that much because the curds aren't were not at the bottom of the bag. So you need to kind of like rewash it or refilter it, I guess. And so you need to move your filter to a new container. And so now I'm kind of doing what I thought would work is laying the clamps over the edge of the cambro. And what I figured out later in this whole process, I didn't need to clamp any of this down on the cambro itself. I could have just laid all eight clamps on the side of the cambro. This is part of it, right? You learn as you go. So now I'm going to refilter out this beginning part. And this is the part that just takes a long time because once those curds settle in, there's less space for the cocktail to filter. So now it's just a waiting game no matter what. And this is the part where it takes forever. All right, so now I have the cocktail fully filtered through the curds. And now we're gonna do the second filtration where we add the, where we add the nut bag inside of the micro bag. It helps, it's just a tighter filter. So it will filter out any smaller particles that are left behind from this process. As you can see, a little bit of the unfiltered cocktail did go back into the drink, which is fine. This is why we're gonna do another filter for. I would say the micro bag probably collected, you know, 96% of any milk particles or any other particles that are left behind. So we're just trying to get the cleanest looking drink possible. I also like to pour cocktail back into the smaller Cambro because it's just easier to work with a smaller vessel than this huge ass one. Again, I'm gonna go through the same process, putting the bag in there, clamping, rolling, and not fully, so it's easier to remove. Actually, I think this is the part where I realized I don't need to clamp the clamps to the camera. I can just roll up the skirt, the outside of the micro bag and just clamp because the weight of these clamps were significant. Now I'm just gonna attach the nut bag to a couple of the clamps inside. Obviously the nut bag is way smaller than this. So I don't know if there are bigger milk nut bags than this, but it seemed to work fine. Because again, the weight of the cocktail is going through pretty fast. Once you get kind of to the bottom, there are still some particles of milk and anything else in that nut bag. So the filtering process, the last like 20% does take a little bit longer than the first part, but it does a really good job. All right, so here I'm taking the all the bags off, just putting it in a bowl because I don't need it anymore, but I also don't want anything else to spill out. Pour it back into the smaller container. Again, it's just easier to work with. And now what I'm just doing is taking a large filter and adding some paper towels. You just want to make sure you fold these paper towels in a way to there's no crease in it or open space when you put the liquid in. So it actually goes through the paper towel to funnel. The reason why you want to use a paper towel over a coffee filter is paper towels aren't as coarse as a coffee filter and just makes the process faster since we've already, this is the third time we're not really looking at 
filtering the wades and the curds, we're just looking at fine tuning the filtering process and any small particles left. I just personally like mason jars. They're big, easy openings. Funnels can easily sit in them. You know, if I was doing five gallons, I would have a kitchen sized funnel and put it back into a big camera. But at home for one gallon, this works perfect. And now it's just kind of a waiting game. It goes by pretty fast, you know, to go through that much liquid in that funnel. So yeah, you just keep pouring and going. Got two mason jars going now at the same time to help speed up the process. What I like to do is with these big ass bottles is keep them around and fill it back up with the cocktail itself because that's 60 ounces you can pour back in in a bottle, which is easy to pour or pour the cocktail out of it. And so yeah, we just keep this process going until we are completely filtered everything through that paper towel, which doesn't take very long at all. So yeah, I think it looked, turned out pretty well. Obviously it can be a little lighter than the green hue in there, but I'm pretty happy with this. So now it's time to reap the benefits of this process. Pouring it out of the mason jar is not the best thing into a jigger, but it is what it is. So I first start with three ounces, but I will definitely put two more ounces in there because like I said earlier, the dilution is 4.6 and we just want to go a little extra heavy today. This is where I remembered, oh yeah, two more ounces. You deserve it. The next part is you're probably wondering why I'm putting it into a mixing glass because I add water for dilution, but I only added 15% dilution. So I just want a little bit more, but I also want the cocktail cold. And I found out if you stir down a cocktail that's been clarified or milk wash and it's not fully clear, stirring it down for like 10 seconds will take out almost the rest of the color for it. Unfortunately, I didn't have any more proper ice at home, so I just used bag ice from the grocery store. I know, I know. Let the comments come in. Pour my lovely cocktail over some rocks in a huge double rocks glass. And then I got some mint. And you can either spank this. I like to kind of smack it around the edge of the glass. I, I just, for me, it's visually cool in front of customers. They could like it. And yeah, and then just put it in there and there you go. A clarified Mai Tai. So now we have a milk wash clarified Mai Tai. It looks awesome. There's still a little green light hue in there. But before we talk about my thoughts on the process, let's try this drink out because I'm not gonna wait any longer. I think over with proper ice, it would look even cooler. Maybe even pebble, I don't know. But I think just the contrast of the the clear and the green from the mint and with the green straw from Surfside Sips, it looks beautiful. I mean, I, I think that's kind of like a showstopper, right? This is kind of why you do milk wash cocktails. Just visually, it looks awesome. So then it's kind of like the mojito effect, right? If someone sees someone get a mojito, then someone else wants a mojito, someone else wants a mojito. Same thing with this. It's just stunning to look at, you know, like a different glassware, if it was served up, shaken, you know, I'm not talking about just in my time, I'm talking about drinks in general with uh, clarified. Thoughts on this process. It took me from the time I first started the filtering process. So about two hours and 45 minutes, that's how long it took me. That took me longer than I was hoping. But again, this is only my second time. The first time was with a whiskey sour and I totally fucked that whole process up. So I'm definitely gonna have people who gave me suggestions about this process to watch this video to see what are their thoughts. Did I do something wrong? Do I need to improve on this or that? I could definitely see this is definitely going to be faster than my other way of having like 25 filters and stuff because it's now in one area. It's, it's taking up less room. So even if it does take a while to filter, you can put one thing off to the side. Things that I want to work on for next time I do this. I kind of figured out the bag thing. I want to kind of figure out like a rim for the bag so that rim can be lift. You can lift up the rim at the entire time and not just each individual handle of the clamps. So it'd be easier process to get it in and out of the Cambros. Definitely probably filter it through the microvine the first step a second time to get it even, not cleaner, but even clearer. That's obviously gonna add more time. And also maybe let it sit overnight while it's milk washed, while it's being milk washed. That could be a thing too. If I still let it sit there, I only let it sit there for five hours, no, four hours. And this is the result I got. So if I maybe did it overnight, would that help too? So there's a lot of variables, right? And so you have to figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you. How much clear do you want the drink? You know, do you want it like crystal clear or do you want it with a little haze from the juice? It's all personal preference, I believe. I mean, it's not what I believe it is. It's so what do you want to do? So I think this is definitely worth it. It's just gonna take a little bit of time 
and practice with it to figure out exactly how it works for me and how I need to use it in day to day. But you know, it's fun doing these different techniques, learning new things because I'm learning with you guys because you know, I'm here in Iowa and my only resources is the internet, but even the internet is not as thorough as just trying shit out, you know? So if you want to watch the other video where I'm trying other things out is I'm no longer double shaking my cocktails with egg whites in it. It's uh, it's just something I've been going over for two to three years now. You can definitely see a video right there of me checking it out.